Welcome back. Let's go on study. The drug classification. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be broadly divided into two groups, non-selective COX inhibitors and the selective COX-2 inhibitors. Non-selective COX inhibitors include aspirin, astaminophen, indomethacin, ibuprofen, and phenylbutazone. In these agents, aspirin is also caused by sodium salicylate. It is the representative drug in this family. And uh, compared with the other agents, it is the most important. I think you can understand. I will, uh, we will study aspirin in detail. Because COX-2, it is inducible COX. It usually elevated uh, activity during process of inflammation. So selective COX-2 inhibitors compared with non-selective inhibitors, they have relatively less adverse reactions. So this group include rofacoxib, silicoxib. Now first the study aspirin. The pharmacological effects, clinical uses, and adverse effects of aspirin are more important. You should know well this content. Let's study in detail. The first effect is analgesic effects. In Chinese, zhen tong. Aspirin it is the most effective in reducing pain of mild to moderate intensity pain, such as headache, toothache, dysmenorrhea, Arthralgia, even neuralgia. This mild to moderate intensity, intensity pain we can use aspirin to treat. But it is not effective for severe visceral pain, myocardial infarction, renal or biliary colic. It is not effective because this pain doesn't involve inflammation. Like myocardial infarction, it is caused by ischemic reaction. You know, under renal biliary colic, it is related to smooth muscle spasm, and uh, uh, direct uh, directly uh, stimulate the nerve ending. And aspirin acts primarily through its effects on inflammation, but probably also inhibits pain stimuli at the subcortical site. The characteristics of analogy of aspirin include it is one moderate analgesic in the treatment of inflammatory pain is effective is, is well enough, but for swear or colic pain, it is useless. And compared with analgesics like morphine or opacity, aspirin has no addiction, no respiratory depression, and it also has no euphoria. Its functional site is primarily in peripheral tissue. And mechanisms it depends on inhibition of COX to decrease the prostaglandin synthesis. The second effect is antipyretic effect. It also is mediated by COX-2 inhibition in CNS. Fall in temperature is related to increased heat dissipation caused by vasodilation of superficial blood vessels and may be accompanied by profuse sweating. So after taking aspirin or other agents in this family, it often induces sweating and then relieve fever. 
it can be used to treat fever caused by any reason. The characteristic of antipyretic effects include it just lower the elevated body temperature. You know, and if the fever caused by any reason, it is effective. But aspirin has no effect on normal body temperature. Its antipyretic effects is independent of environmental temperature. This is different from clopromazine. Do you still remember this, Jack? You know, it is one antipsychotic drug usually used to treat type 1 schizophrenia and to act on the CNS. It also can alter body temperature according to the environment temperature, you know, with the physical cooling. Chlorpyrimazine can decrease the body temperature even lower than the normal scope, like close to 30 Celsius degree. If the environment temperature is higher than the body temperature, chlorpyrimazine also can increase the body temperature even higher than the normal state. But aspirin it just reduced the elevated body temperature to the normal state. When the body, body temperature recovered to the normal state, aspirin cannot further alter the body temperature. So they are different. It also has no effect on fever caused by prostaglandins intravenous injection. You know, its antipyretic effects it depends on the synthesis of prostaglandins inhibition, you know, by inhibiting COX. So once this fever caused by prostaglandins intravenous injection, it is invalid. And, uh, you know, the fever usually caused by some microorganism infection. So it decreased the elevated body temperature. It is just a simple symptomatic treatment. Symptomatic treatment. So it cannot relieve the reason for the fever. So if there's a fever caused by infection with bacteria, antibiotic drugs also are more important. Do you understand? If it is caused by virus infection, antiviral drugs, it also is important. When we use aspirin in high dose, its anti-inflammatory and anti-rheumatic effects are more obvious. Using aspirin in high dosage is responsible for the treatment of various kinds of inflammation, like acute rheumatic fever, rheumatoid, and other types of arthritis. I mentioned this Rheumatoid arthritis, it is also involves inflammation. And this inflammation also is mediated by autoimmune function. When we use aspirin in high dose, it can also inhibit this inflammation. It has been advocated as a diagnostic test when acute rheumatic fever is suspected. So actually, large dose of aspirin, it also has a significance in diagnosis of rheumatic fever. If this 
acute rheumatic fever is suspected, just use aspirin in high dose. If the fever is relieved, uh, is relieved by large dose of aspirin within one to two day, two to two days, we can diagnose this is acute rheumatic fever. So it has this diagnostic significance. But it usually requires a higher dose than antipyretic effects and analgesic effects. Effects on platelets. Aspirin in low dose, it can inhibit platelet aggregation and produce a slightly prolonged bleeding time by irreversible inhibition of platelet cox. And the low dose of aspirin can inhibit the production of T, uh, TXA2 in platelets without markedly interf interfering with prostaglandins I2 uh, production in endothelial cells because COX-1 in platelet, it is more sensitive than that of COX uh, in the endothelial cells. So when you use aspirin in low dose, aspirin just inhibits COX-1 in platelet, so reduce the production of TXA2 without effect on the COX in endothelial cells. So the function of TXA2, it is decreased by aspirin. It can induce antiplatelet and inhibit platelet aggregation, has this effect. So because of this high selectivity to COX-1 in platelet, we just use aspirin at 50 to 100 mg in a day to prevent thrombosis. So by using aspirin in low dose, about 100 mg in a day, decrease the intensity of uh, intensity, it can decrease the incidence of transient ischemic attacks, unstable angina, coronary artery thrombosis with myocardial infarction and the thrombosis after coronary artery bypass grafting. So after using this aspirin, especially chronic use of aspirin at low dose, it will induce the continuous inhibition of a TXA2. So inhibit the thrombosis. But you know, during bleeding, we also require this function of this TXA2. When some patients require a surgery, and at the same time, at the same time, they use aspirin in low dose to prevent this disease and attack. Try to stop one week prior to surgery to avoid bleeding complication. You know, during surgery, it must induce bleeding. And uh, during this process, we usually require hemostasis, you know, to promote the platelet aggregation and the local visual contraction to, to prevent bleeding complication. So it is very important. Stop one week prior to surgery. OK, there is a summary for aspirin. The effects of aspirin include four points, analgesic, antipyretic, anti-inflammatory and anti-rheumatic effects and anti-thrombotic actions. 
based on these therapeutic effects, aspirin is very useful. It can be used to treat various pains, like uh, such as headache, headache, toothache. The required dose is usually in a day two, three, two to three gram. It also common used to relieve fever. Caused by any reason, it is effective. But don't forget, it is just a symptomatic treatment. For the acute rheumatic fever, it can be used for differential diagnosis. Once after using aspirin in a large dose, the fever disappears within one to four, two days. It can be diagnosed. Rheumatic arthritis. It can work as the first choice in the treatment of rheumatic arthritis. Usually, this condition requires a large dose, three to five grams in a day. Don't exceed five grams in a day. To prevent thrombosis formation, we just use aspirin in low dose. In a day, one mg, maybe it is enough. But once some individual diagnosed by myocardial infection, acute myocardial infection, the first time of administration yearly, it is 300. A gram, 300 a gram, a mg, 300 mg. Just to shorten the antiplatelet effect to take on site. Next one, aspirin, it also used to treat mucoc mucocutaneous lymphoid node syndrome, lymphoid node syndrome. This disease, in the previous slide, I didn't mention this. Actually, this disease usually also requires a large dose of aspirin. This disease, we usually use MCRIs to describe. Because it is the first described by a Japanese man, a Japanese doctor, Kawasaki. So this disease also named Kawasaki disease. Actually, it is one acute febrile eruptive disease in children. It is a syndrome of vasculitis. Now look at what is this disease. This disease occurs more in children especially in boy. Mucocutaneous lymphoid node syndrome is a kind of systemic vasculitis. The patient usually has these symptoms. Ocular membrane congestion, skin rash, skin rash, and febrile. And in the mouth, usually has a diffuse congestion in oral mucosa and strawberry like tongue. Hand and feet has had, a hand and feet have hot edema. And the children also have non prolent lymph node enlargement. The serious influence is the heart. And the coronary artery dilation is common, even coronary aneurysm. Actually, this is the most serious complication caused by this disease. Try to avoid the 
Siggy did this, divide by into this series result. So once it is diagnosed by Kawasaki DDS. Usually, the, the drug therapy it is very essential, including intravenous injection gamma globulin and a large dose of aspirin and glucocorticoids. You know, in this chapter at the beginning, I mentioned this is one. Uh, how hormone released from a genome glands. It also has a very potent anti-inflammatory effects. When aspirin used in large dose, it can relieve fever. It also can induce anti-inflammatory effects. So in the treatment of this disease, large dose of aspirin is very important, is very useful. And usually this disease, you know, the patients has fever, it's so common. Some antibiotic drugs are invalid, actually, till now. The etiology of this Kawasaki disease still is unclear. But you should know today, in the treatment of this disease, the drug therapy, including these three agents, are very important. OK, that's all for this section. These are the pharmacological effects and the therapeutic applications of aspirin and you know especially low dose of aspirin in our daily life is so common used to prevent thrombosis formation to prevent a type of some disease like antenopacteries you know so what are the adverse effects of the aspirin Especially when they use it in a long term, in a long term. So go to study next section.